Good day, we are the rigorous robots designers and developers, or in short, R2D2, from River Valley High School. Our team ID is SG0607. This is an overview of our presentation. We will start with our hardware design process, from sensor selection to robot design. Next, we will move on to software design, one for the line tracking and the other for the evacuation zone. Lastly, we will talk about our learning as a team. Let us start off with our hardware design. Firstly, we chose to use LEGO EV3 for this competition. Since we need to line track through black lines and detect green squares on the side of the black lines to decide on turning, two color sensors were used to line track through the black lines. Based on intuition and also testing, we have realized that Separating the color sensors one line width apart can detect green squares without the need to move the sensors around. Also, having the sensors close to the wheels also allows our robot to track through sharp curves and turns. However, this causes two problems. First, our robot needs to go slower. And second, the reflected color intensity values of the two sensors have different ranges. The first problem is a trade-off that our group thinks is fine to make. This is because it is more important for us to be able to complete the task rather than going as fast as possible. Whereas for the second problem, we use the difference between the left and right sensor to determine the motor turning power. Hence, when the sensor has different range of values, it distorts the motor turning power to cause a more intense turn on one side. So, we mitigate it by normalizing using the formula shown as this transforms the return value to a proportion. Next, since we need to avoid obstacles in our line tracking, we used a touch sensor to detect obstacles. As it requires contact to sense an obstacle, it always detects obstacles from a fixed distance away. This simplifies the process to avoid the obstacle. Nonetheless, it could not actively track the obstacle while avoiding it, leading us to establish a specific algorithm to avoid the obstacle. The reason why we use TAT sensor instead of ultrasonic sensor is because it is more reliable. A TAT sensor missed 0 out of 10 testings, however, ultrasonic sensor missed 3 out of the 10 testings that we did. This may be due to the different angles that the ultrasonic sensor is placed on, which may cause the sensor to not sense some obstacles. This is our first design of our robot. The color sensor was placed behind the wheels, which causes line tracking and victim collection to run in different directions, which is troublesome when we need to line track and victim collection process. Also, another flaw of our first design includes the inability to turn smoothly and accurately because of the instability of the wheels. Since the ultrasonic sensor is less reliable as mentioned before, we plan to sweep through the whole evacuation zone for victim collection. Our first design hands contain a small one-way lock to collect victims, causing the chances of collecting the ball to be smaller. Learning from our first build, we shifted the victim collection portion of our robot behind for support to be built to stabilize the wheels. We also reduced it to four wheels for smoother turning with less friction and lengthened the one-way lock to greater likelihood of victim collection while sweeping through the evacuation zone. Nevertheless, the center of gravity for this build is too close to the back edge of the wheels, leading to tipping. Also, we are using line tracking in the evacuation zone as well. Since the line tracking and evacuating programs run in different directions for this build, line tracking is too complex to be coded with the color sensors behind the wheels moving at the same time. This leads to our third build, where the two programs are made to run in the same direction. Meanwhile, the center of gravity has been brought forward to prevent tipping. Even so, there is still a chance for ping pong balls to hit the edge of the robot and roll off in victim collection. However, our group thinks that this is inevitable, but we have minimized the width of the edge to reduce the chances of this happening. This is the design of our one-way lock. It is designed in such a way that it allows for the victims to enter in one direction only. This is placed in front of our robot so that we can reverse the robot without the victim falling out. This clamp is located right behind the one-way lock. It is designed in such a way that it doesn't affect the center of gravity of the robot much. 
and it does its job by lifting the victim off the ground as we need to lift the victims up upon leaving the evacuation zone. Here are more photos of the design that we finalized. Now we are going to talk about the software designs and algorithms we decided to implement, such as the line tracking and the part about the evacuation zone. For line tracking, we use a tracking algorithm called the PD tracking. It is based on the raw green of the RGB value. At first, we use another strategy which is switching to and fro from the color mode and the reflected light intensity mode. However, this strategy worsened the line tracking performance. The reason why we used the green value in RGB instead of the blue or red value is because the green value has the largest difference in sensing black and white. This tracking algorithm is able to also track sharp turns effectively and consistently as well. Another of our line tracking strategies is that if the error between both of the sensors are smaller than a certain value, the robot will neglect tracking and move straight instead. This implementation allows the robot to be able to move through the detached tracks because the robot moves straight forward when the error is smaller than their value. Next, we will be talking about the strategy we use to allow the robot to avoid obstacles. Once the touch sensor senses an obstacle, the robots will curve past around it until the color sensor senses the black line and return back to tracking. This is our strategy for how the robot is going to use the green markers and turn accordingly. The robot is programmed to detect green squares and then move forward to detect black lines. If there is no black lines behind the green square, the robot will move and continue line tracking and not turn. This is faster than the previous strategy that we used, which is detecting junction first and then reversing to detect the green square. We face a problem, which is that the robot might falsely detect green squares while line tracking. After some investigation, we found out that this is caused by comparing only the raw green value while detecting green squares. Our solution to this problem is that instead of just using raw green value, we compare all raw RGB values with tolerance and value, so as to not falsely detect green squares. While entering the evacuation zone, the robot will perform a single line track using the left color sensor to a corner and turn right to align to one edge. Since the entrance of the zone can be anywhere on the border, our robot will head to a corner to limit the entering cases down to only two cases, which is to enter either from the length or breadth of the zone. Next, our robot will move forward along the edge it is aligned to to determine if it's a length. Should it be a length, the robot will proceed to sweeping. Otherwise, it will turn right when it reaches the other corner and proceed to sweeping. By doing this, we can account for the entrances located everywhere on the border. As for the sweeping strategy, please refer to our engineering logbook part C2B for more details. Our strategy to exit the evacuation zone is to use single line tracking of the right color sensor until the exit color is being detected. We use the right color sensor to track so as to keep the exit on the right of the robot. No matter where the exit is, our strategy allows the robot to exit the evacuation zone effectively. Last but not least, we will discuss briefly about our soft skills development through this competition. We have learned to communicate effectively in our group to facilitate exchange of ideas and learning. This sped our discussion and made more time for testing. Moreover, we have also learned how to collaborate with one another. We split our workloads and tap on each other's strengths to progress as a team. This stretches our ability and achievement as a team. That's all from us. Thank you.